Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you'll need to know about the various different systems and gameplay mechanics in Eve Echoes. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Project Discovery, a new mode that has been temporarily added to the game. It will be going away apparently in December for some reason. You'll also need to be tech level 7 or higher um, in order to access this. In this lesson, we're going to go over what Project Discovery is, how you access it, how you complete it, and why you would even want to in the first place by having a look at some of the rewards. Now, ultimately, there is a fair bit to cover here. I'm going to try and keep this as non-biased and just directly to the facts as possible. I do have some opinions <laughs> regarding this that I'm sure will come out at some point during the video. But otherwise, please hit like on the video if you enjoy it. That five seconds it takes you to click that like button really helps me out as a channel, and of course, I do have a Patreon page and a Redbubble merchandise store where if you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so. That all said and done then, let's talk about Project Discovery. Now, you might be forgiven for not even noticing that this had been added to the game because it is hidden away within the menus. There's nothing if you're docked up here on the right hand side and if you open up your standard menu, there's nothing for it here either. Instead, we're going to need to go into the event menu and find it by basically going through to daily events for some reason and Project Discovery is about halfway down here. Now, before we talk about what Project Discovery is, how you're going to do it, etc., let's have a look at the why you would even want to. Now, by completing tasks in Project Discovery, you will earn yourself science points, which yes, I know to some people is yet another currency, but it's exclusive to this mode and just here to make sure that you're not using points from other things. It's just rewards from doing this. And if we tap on Enter Store, we can open up the new Eden Store. You can also go in by the standard front way and um, going into the store, then Exchange Store and Science Credits Exchange on the left hand side. And there are these various items available. Now, first and foremost, the most obvious one. For 50,000 science points, you can buy yourself an Enforcer prototype. And this is a really cool ship. Ultimately, it looks really cool. This is one of the Concorde vessels. We talked about this briefly in some previous videos. But for today, it is a cruiser-sized vessel that actually packs quite a lot of firepower. You've got four high slots, three mid slots, and four low slots, three of each of the rig types, and it can be used for various different roles. If you're sitting there going, oh, but it's a ship, what can I use it for? What are the chances it actually fits what I want it to? Well, for starters, you can use sinusural field generators and covert ops cloaking devices. So this puts it alongside things like, say, the Bellicose, the Arbitrator, the Celestis, and if you fly it, the Blackbird. However, we then get bonuses from advanced advanced micro warp drive, which will give us a reduction to signature radius penalty like the bellicose and plus 10% warp speed, which is quite nice, 50% faster warping. Advanced electronic warfare gives you additional webifier optimal range and a reduction to your signature radius and then the weapon skill start. Now, it doesn't really matter which advanced medium skills you have, they will benefit it somehow. You can see here 7.5% medium laser damage, 10% optimal range, so 50% optimal range, and 37.5% medium laser damage if you're training into advanced medium lasers, which I have, hence the Harbinger you saw at the start of the video. Advanced medium missiles will give you 37.5 missile damage and 25% additional flight time for range. Railgun skills will give you a 37.5% railgun damage and a 37.5% tracking speed bonus. Cannons will give you 37.5 medium cannon damage and a 50% medium cannon accuracy fall off, which is amazing for auto cannons. And advanced cruiser command will also give you an additional bonus of 25% to both the shield and the armor for the ship. It's a really cool vessel. There's a lot going on in this. It looks really cool. You can kind of use it no matter what your medium ship skills happen to be. It is slightly disappointing that they've added this at a time when there's very little content for medium ships, but hey, it is an absolute beast and no I don't know what it's going to look like in regards to insurance points. It does also get a unique nano core available during the sleeper event and a couple of cool skins that we'll talk about more at depth later. 
Its actual basic stats really aren't bad either. Most of it is shield and armor, which are sort of middling. They're nothing overly special here. Fairly decent capacitors as we go down the list here. Signature radius is actually quite small for a ship of this tonnage, good scan resolution-ish, um, with actually fairly decent warp speed, and the mass and inertia, really, really nice. This is a fast to warp ship, um, even if itself it's not the fastest thing once it's actually on grid. I really like it, and if you like the sounds of this, well, for 50,000 uh, science points, you will be able to get one of these as well, and there is a skin for it, the Expedition skin, this sort of silvery magnetic one, it's kind of handsome. I'll be honest, I still personally prefer the main, but I know a lot of people like these metallic skins. For an additional 8,400 science credits, you can get yourself that Enforcer prototype skin. Also for 4,200, you can get Trailblazer skins for the Condor, Condor 2, Condor Interceptor, and Condor 2 Interceptor. And I don't know why they've only gone for the Condor, but these are the skins. They're quite, again, quite handsome. They look fairly similar to some of the Gurusness ones, a little bit similar to the Monsoon in a way as well. They're pretty nice little skins, and they're not too bad price-wise either. Finally then, we have two science crates. We can open these up and have a look. A science crate small gives you a chance of any of the items here. So some ISK, some gift IP, a load of rig materials, various different of the device compilation devices, and some nanocore materials below that as well. Nothing overly special, but if you've got a couple of these and you really don't want the enforcer because you don't fly cruisers, it's something to do with them. And if we go into the large crates, these can give you 50,000 skill points and 200,000 Lazarus units every time you get one of those, though those are significantly more expensive at 16,800 science credits. And ultimately, that's what you're doing this for. These are the rewards that are available for doing Project Discovery. So it's all very well and good us talking about what you get for doing it, let's actually have a look at how this works. So again, we come back into the events, we go to the project discovery page, and there is a start button here. Now, first of all, a minor complaint about how they've done this in Eve Echoes. In EVE Online Project Discovery, the big hook is that you are helping with real-world science by essentially assisting with data sort of editing and um, parsing. So they have done two in EVE Online. The first one was looking at exoplanets, where essentially you were given data and you had to identify whether or not an exoplanet might be there. And what this essentially did for that team was it meant that they had thousands and thousands of printouts of data data to go through, and we the player base were narrowing that down to actually highlight the ones that look like they might mean something. They then, with the sort of advent of the coronavirus pandemic, swapped to a liquid cytography minigame that allows you to actually take real-world samples of protein cytography and see whether or not that has uh, implications of being infected by coronavirus. Again, you're taking large amounts of data provided by real-world scientists and stripping it down into something much more manageable for them to work with. Now, Project Discovery was billed as being something that would be helping with real-world science. Again, there was talk with the University of Brussels, I think it was, or University of Belgium, something to do with protein sampling, but I'm not entirely certain how that actually plays into what we get. Now, when you log in for, a, uh, for the first time since Project Discovery has been added, you will get a little chat where one of the, I think it's Sophie Klein from uh, Sisters of Eve pops up and sort of says, hey, um, this is now available. The Yan Jung wants some assistance. They've reappeared recently. Um, and, you know, they, they're assisting with this scientific research, which is a cool little bit of lore, but it does make it perplexing that it's the Enforcer prototype and not any of the Yan Jung stuff. But hey, there we go. Now, if you hit start on this, it's going to bring you through to this page. Now, this page here, you are looking at various different data points. And the aim of this is to essentially line this up for the best possible data point. You can do so just by dragging this brown sort of colored layer around and try and line it up to the best of your ability. And if, like me, you've got a little bit of fat thumbs, and like that you saw, may have seen at the top left, it says points matched. You can try and get this as high as you like. I got it to about 150 a moment ago. Let's see if we can line that up. Once it's in position, you can actually use this bit on the right-hand side as well to tap left and right to line this up a bit more and see how high we can go. I think 150, 151 is probably the best I'm going to get here. 
There we are. And if you're interested, if you tap the middle of this, you can now move the whole sample around without losing anything there. And that's an interesting way just to get the camera where you need it to be. But when you're happy that you've matched up that brown and blue layer to the best of your ability, it's never going to be 100%. We're going to hit matching complete and the real mini game will start. And this is time sensitive. So you drag the things around here, you drag this overlay around with the... Uh, with your uh, thumb, you tap on match once you've lined some of the bits up, and essentially the aim is to clear all of these as quickly as possible. Now it's not anything graphically spectacular, but it's not really supposed to be. So you can see I'm just moving this sort of overlay around, trying to line up these triangles, these arrows, whatever you want to call them, to the best of my ability in a fairly quick time limit. Um, to try and complete this as quickly as we can. And the faster you complete it, the more points you will get, the more science points you will get. So I'm gonna be doing this fairly quickly and we'll talk about how this all works and some tips and that in just a second. So there we have it. I've got a basic score of 65, there were 65 points cleared, and a time bonus of 32. Um, it does explain, if you tap on the question mark here, how this all works here. So about the minigame, try to match as many data points as possible at the pre-level, and eliminate points as fast as possible at the main level. So during the pre-level, rough matching at the pre-level, hold and drag the screen to move the yellow and blue points for rough matching, obtain as many white points for e uh, easier clearance in subsequent levels, and if we go to next page, you can see that in the main level, you're trying to match and eliminate the arrows as quickly as possible. And you can use the, as I said, the little pad there for fine manipulation. Finally, here we have the scoring rules. You will get five credits for each point eliminated. 50% bonus will be added when the end time displays green, after which the bonus will gradually decrease to 0%. So I've got 33 there. That has given me a time bonus of 32 points. Total of 97. Seems simple, right? Well, let's go again. Now some of these get pretty complex and you're trying to find an arrow that does actually line up and if like me you're sometimes an idiot and you tap the screen missing the match button it can be infuriating as your data suddenly shifts to the other side. So my biggest tip when doing this on a phone screen at least is that I use my left thumb to manipulate the data points, the little triangle overlay, and I use my right thumb hovering over the match button in order to just tap that as soon as everything is lined up. And that to me allows me to do it much, much faster. Fortunately, because I've got a pretty good cell phone, the Asus ROG 3, um, I can actually fine tune this quite nicely. There's a lot of, you know, very low touch latency on this particular screen, but I do understand some particular devices might struggle to get that sort of fine tuning. And sometimes it can be difficult like there to find the particular arrow you're looking for. I do find it best as I'm moving around, I kind of pick one arrow to look at and I try to find something similar to it and I'll just kind of gloss over some of the stuff on the sides. Now, what kind of irritates me a little bit compared to how this was in EVE Online is that doing, for example, the liquid cytography, that was actually something I did at university. Some of you may know I did a forensic chemistry and pathology degree um, at the University of Kingston-upon-Thames in London, um, and things like liquid cytography is actually one of the things that you do do. So that was real-world science that I was having fun and earning points in a video game for doing something that I actually studied at university. It's like a mini-game, ultimately, and even at university. University. I'm sure I made that comment at one point that it was like a mini game, but ultimately this doesn't seem to have any real world science application. It doesn't hook into anything like that, which is mildly disappointing. But hey, you can see at the end of this round, 328 points for the round in total, broken up by 220 for the eliminated points and 108 for the time bonus. Let's go one more time. We're going to get another one of these overlays that we're going to try and line up to the best of our ability. And I just kind of keep an eye on the left hand side of the screen and see how high that number kind of goes. 56 appears to basically be the highest that I could get here. This one doesn't line up overly well. 57, that will do. So now we come back to the main mini game and I just kind of off I go. Let's match these points. Now, what I'm saying here is that I don't know of anything in actual science where like just lining up triangles like this is something that actually means anything. Like this liquid cytography, if you were to type that into say Google, I might see if I've got an image I can put on screen now, take a screenshot of it. Um, essentially, you'll see that it's like a cluster of various data points and you're actually taking those data points, which are real world samples and sort of, <sighs> 
grouping them away from each other, drawing lines around it to denote where one group starts and another group ends. Um, and that is real world science. If you do liquid cytography, that is the kind of thing you will need to do once you have a data sample. You're actually going to have to process it and get rid of irrelevant data and focus more on what is important to you and to the sample. I've never seen anything like this, so it does feel a little less sciencey and a little bit more video gamey. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just for me, as someone with a bit of a scientific background and a bit of a, you know, an interest in these things, it does feel like I'm not really doing the science. I'm just performing a mini game that has been loosely attributed to being assisting with real world science and nowhere in any of the descriptions that I've seen at least does it actually even explain how or why we're assisting you know outside of the law thing of oh the Yan Zheng want to know more about our genome and so we're assisting them with some kind of data analysis and that to me kind of sucks a little bit it's not it, it's not a, a deal breaker. I still actually quite enjoy this mini game. I know some people have like on Reddit and that have already slammed it as being one of the most boring, um, like repetitive tasks out there. But for the most part, I do genuinely find this quite fun to do. It's soothing. It's an interesting way to pass some time in game, especially if, for example, you want to be doing some of the new, uh, like dormant realms. I'm trying to line this one up. You know, I think 70, 71 is about the best we're going to get. Um, if you're waiting for your group for Dormant Realms, this is something you can do whilst docked up at a station um, and just kill some time and earn some points. And yes, some other folks have pointed out that basically if you are looking to get the actual uh, the, the ship rewards, etc. from this, you are going to have to put in a lot of time every day because again slightly perplexingly netties have decided that this time around not only are they locking this behind tier 7 for some reason not only are they making it time limited until december for some reason they're also locking an amount that you can do per day again for some reason i i don't know what the thinking here is but you cannot just sit and grind this there is a leaderboard for this um and I think a lot of the sort of the point of this has just been sacrificed in order to justify having a leaderboard, which does feel a little bit sad, especially since there doesn't really appear to be any purpose to that leaderboard other than, oh, you can get some higher level rewards, including a nano core for the enforcer. It just feels like a leaderboard has been added just to justify the need for a leaderboard. And I don't mind there being time limits. I don't mind there being points that that works quite nicely. But the addition of a leaderboard and the other restrictions that are on this do for me seem to be a little bit perplexing. And I'm, it's up to you of whether or not you agree with me. You'll also notice, I want to draw your attention here at the moment, at the bottom of this, there is a 0, 3 out of 10 currently. You see, I've done three different samples. That gives me a 3 out of 10 um, so far for today. You can only do 10 of these per day. So if you do want to go for that Enforcer prototype, you are going to be needing to do a lot of these every day. And after 10 days, you'll also earn yourself this cool medal on the right hand side here as well. Now I'm going to click out from another round because I think I've showcased enough of the mini game. Let's have a look. There is the project discovery leaderboard here, which you'll see on the right hand side. It's a little bit buggy at the moment. It's not always displaying very well. Um, and it is definitely one of those things. It's been boosted at the moment because obviously everyone got 3000 science points today because of the bugs and that in it. But and it's also showing me as having zero, despite that I've just earned myself 820 on top of the 3000. But hey, it's there. That's the leaderboard. And you can kind of have a go through this. Now, my biggest complaint on this, and again, I wanted this to be an educational video, purely Cat Skull Academy, but I think it does bear some sort of discussion as well. If you really want the enforcer right now, you kind of can, and this is so confusing. If you come into the store, into the bestseller combo and hot, you can buy a super research sample box, which contains 2,888 science credits for 200 Aurum. And it, you can buy up to five of these for that total of 1,000 Aurum, and that will give you, well, however many that works out to. It's still not enough to get the Enforcer, but if you wanted to, you can just blitz your way through this, buy a load of uh, science credits, um, and just earn a load of stuff. You'll get some Classified 2 Gravitational Wave Graphs and some sm of those small science crates as well, but it is mainly the science credits you're buying this for. So what's the point in a leaderboard when you can just buy your way up it would be my question. But there we go. I think that's being perhaps a little unfair. 
Now, I really enjoy this. Yes, it's a little bit samey-samey. Yes, there are some perplexing design decisions that they've made on this, but ultimately, I think it's a bit of fun. It's something to do to kill the time whilst you're docked up. If it is helping with real-world science, that's awesome, and it does have some really cool rewards in regards to that Enforcer prototype, and who knows, maybe it's worth holding on to some of those science credits in case they add a Phase 2 at some point in the future, and add the Pacifier prototype, or the Marshall prototype, for example, two of the other Concord ships. But anyway, that's about everything for today's video. That should showcase everything you need to know about Project Discovery, why you would do it, how you do it, um, and kind of some thoughts and opinions on the way as well. Although, of course, those are just my own personal thoughts and opinions. You probably have your own, and I'd love to hear those in the comment section down below. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end. Hopefully this has helped you. Do let me know if you have any questions. Come join the Catskull Discord for a chance to win a month of Combo Omega. Remember, I give three of those away every single week, um, and I'd love to chat with you guys more about this kind of stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!